Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I um, have been playing around yesterday with the mechanical layout just to get a bit of an idea of where things will need to go in order to sort of create some space underneath, which we'll look at soon to, to fit in all the circuits. So, this is pretty well what I've settled upon. Um, left hand side, uh, we have the rotary encoder, which will be for the frequency, obviously. Um, and here will be the volume control. So ordinarily, as you're tuning around, we can adjust the volume. Uh, I'm not going to have AGC on this radio, so having the volume control nice and handy is certainly uh, useful for um, changing between sort of high power and low power stations on receive. Um, low profile switch there, so it doesn't interfere with normal operation. That will be to push down and then to change uh, what I call the radix or the uh, digit that's been changed with the VFO um, so that's that button there on the right hand side we have starting at the top the Anderson pole power and just below that the antenna so that's nice and uh, you know top right hand corner in terms of the cabling coming in keeps it nice and neat uh, the switch next to it debating about what I'm going to do with that one um, you'll see later on in the uh, the topology when I talk about that that there'll be the option potentially to have an RF amplifier coming off the um, antenna. Debating if that's going to be for that or not, we'll see. Uh, just below that, um, either way, the ATU will be um, switched in and out. So you can have it either uh, in for non-resonant antennas or if we have a resonant antenna, um, have it switched out. Uh, this is just a representative switch at the moment. I've got a, um, an 11, a, a two pole 11 uh, throw switch coming. For RF which will be for the inductor and what I intend to do there position number zero or position number one whatever the very left hand side will be bypass so by utilizing those two poles I can have the the whole ATU totally bypassed and then uh, positions then one through ten uh, will be the various taps coming off the inductor and then below that is the, the capacitor uh, in order to tune the radio big red button down here so uh, the process will be the button gets pressed that will throw the radio into tune the display will change to SWR or a tuning indicator of some sort which will then allow you to uh, adjust inductance and the, uh, the capacitance to, to, to bring it into resonance the antenna that is uh, and then release, uh, release to return back to normal operation uh, and um, microphone bottom right hand corner again to keep the, the cabling away from the normal controls over here. So what does that mean for underneath? Um, not too bad, basically a bit of, do a bit of shoehorn to get it all in. So that's the, the layout there, we've got the speaker of course, um, the uh, display, uh, the intent will be to have the microcontroller mounted just above that and then just the left hand side will be the SI5351 so it keeps that all in a nicely closed up area there along with the, uh, the rotary encoder uh, and the, the radix switch here uh, that's, a, that's the thinking anyway and then that gives me the space here to, to try and squeeze everything in I'm going to have to um, done or do what I've done in, in previous builds as an example here's one from a while back where I'll have to create some vertical boards there to allow the various um, modules to, to, to squeeze into the available space which is fine uh, in an ideal world it would be very nice to have it all nicely laid out but that's just not going to happen so like I say there will be a series of, of vertical boards there to separate um, the various circuits and to create the, the, um, the area I need to, to make it all work so anyway, like, it's like I say, that's just a, a work in progress. Um, I need to do this sort of early up just to, uh, to think about then um, this, the available space, uh, then to make some decisions on, on how it's all going to fit and um, what the circuits may look like. But other than that, I'm sort of relatively happy with how that's turned out. It certainly fits in the box nicely um, and it all closes up like it should. So yeah, all good. So next steps, um, I just want to sort of quickly touch on the, the topology that I've, I've settled upon and uh, sort of next steps. So simplistically for on receive, uh, we've got the RF coming in through the ATU. As I mentioned, that'll be uh, bypassed, so we can have the ATU in or out. 
Uh, there will be a relay here which will serve two purposes. It will be to switch the antenna between the receive uh, and the transmit. And then the second pole will be to switch the 12 volts between the receive circuitry and the transmit circuitry. So um, in the past I have used a mechanical switch to do that, which has worked very well. Um, but in this particular case, because I have a microphone here with a nice PTT in there, it's going to be easy enough then, well, not so much easy enough. Um, in this particular case, uh, it'll be done with the relay. Um, that RF will come through. I've elected to have the RF amplifier prior to the bandpass filter. There's pros and cons either way. Um, I've decided to go this way just in case that if I had a, a really weak signal, um, I wasn't reducing that further and, and potentially putting the noise floor before the amplification. Um, I'm pretty comfortable here in our environment um, that overloading is not going to be an issue, so I'm quite happy to have the RFM prior to the bandpass filter. Either way, RFM will be in here. Um, still a bit of a question mark if I want to have that switched in or out. Um, ordinarily below 10 MHz, there's not a great uh, need to have amplification prior to the mixer. Um, but because I'm running negative feedback amps here, my overall gain is going to be reduced across the IF strip. Uh, so um, I'm probably more than likely, rather than having, say, a second amplifier within the IF strip uh, on either side of the crystal filter, uh, I'll make up that lost gain through an RF amp over here. So that's pretty well we're going to settle on. So that switch may or may not become redundant. And there's still a little bit of a question mark in terms of the ATU switch that comes if I'll have sufficient room underneath that uh, wafer switch to have the inductor. Um, if I can, that'd be great. If not, then, um, yeah, anyway, I won't go into here, but a bit of a question mark around the, the function of that switch. Anyway, so we're talking about receive here. Bandpass filter, that'll be a um, for 40 meters, so seven megs, and then into the, uh, the mixers and the IF strip. Now, what I'm going to do here with these two simple relays here is you could shear the IF strip between the transmit circuitry and the receive circuitry using one relay, which uh, is sort of crossing over the, um, the throws. The downside of that is you have... Um, a high level of RF coming out of your this amplifier here in terms of that particular relay being very close to what's going into the IEF strip and you run the real risk and it, it in fact it's not so much running the risk it, it happens a lot uh, you get feedback and a lot of squealing going on to mitigate that I have settled upon this topology here which um, works well and I'm going to do it again uh, two little miniature relays double pole double throws and while it looks complex, it's actually pretty straightforward. Uh, and the logic is, on receive, the SI5351 is feeding into this mixer, the VFO, and into the second mixer, which is the product detector, the BFO. So RF comes in, it comes into the RF port, it gets mixed with the VFO, and the output is the IF. As you can see, the RF comes through, through that pole there, into it, back out to the second pole of that double pole, double throw relay, up and into the IF strip. Comes out of the IF strip, so IF uh, amp 1, the crystal filter, IF amp 2, comes down through this um, line here into the RF port, so we're now talking about the product detector here. It's mixed with the BFO, and out of the IF port will come audio frequency. That audio frequency goes through that second pole, through to here, into the AF amplifier, and out through the speaker. So nice and easy. On transmit, everything toggles across to the right hand side. So our microphone audio comes in here. It's now going into the IF port. And over here, the way that the beauty is in, in um, software, we reverse the outputs of the SI35351. So over here, it would have been BFO frequency on receive. On transmit, we feed into this side. And on this side over here, uh, the VFO or the um, the carrier frequency will be on this side. So on transmit, the RF, say so again, audio frequency comes into here. It's now going into the IF port. It's getting mixed with the BFO and RF comes out. That RF is actually the intermediate frequency. And we'll now go through here. As we see, we're linked across 
into the IF strip, so same direction through our IF strip, back out over here. That, of course, this is no longer made, so we jump across to here, and it comes through here into our IF, gets mixed with the carrier frequency or the VFO, and gets stepped up to our desired transmit frequency, which is over here. It then goes out this one into our um, bandpass filter, our transmit power amplifier, low pass filter, and out the out the um, out the antenna. This works extremely well. These are physically separated, and you you minimise. In fact, you, you eliminate. I would say, and it's certainly my experience, uh, the problems of having that high level of um, IF here being close to the low level of here at the, at the start of the IF strip. In other words, you reduce that feedback. So that's the topology I'm going to stick with. Um, in terms of uh, building sequence, what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to start off by getting the microcontroller up and running, uh, getting that talking to the rotary encoder, get that talking to the display, um, set up the SI 5351, uh, get that calibrated, so running through the calibration procedure there to make sure that's outputting um, the right frequency. Uh, and once that's up and running, I'll then move into the audio amp, and there'll be a, a logic of the sequence in terms of, sort of testing and sort of you'll see the function in a sec. So once I've got the let's, let's call it the brains of the operation up and running here, I can then work on the audio frequency amplifier, get that up and running, and there'll be on the output there just a or that, sorry on the input will actually be a small uh, audio frequency low pass filter. It'll be a, a simple RC, nothing flash. Uh, once I've finished with that, I'll work on the two uh, bandpass filters. Um, the downside of this topology here, as opposed to, say, the BIDX style, where we have bi-directional amplifiers um, going through the strip, is I do have to have one additional bandpass filter, one for the receive and then one down here for the transmit, which is fine. Um, that offsets the need for another three amplifiers. So, you know, there's swings and roundabouts, pros and cons of um, um, either way. So anyway, I'll do the two bandpass filters, um, I'll do the antenna RF amplifier, and at that point uh, we'll have sufficient components to put together a direct conversion receiver. So we'll have the audio coming in, so again, the RF coming in, being amplified, we'll put into the one mixer here, we'll set up the code to uh, output uh, the same frequency as what's being received, um, and then we will produce directly um, audio out of the IF We'll feed that audio straight into the audio amp and out the speaker. So we'll have a direct conversion receiver at that point in time. We'll then look to uh, convert that into a single sideband. So we'll work on the two um, IF amplifiers here and uh, the pad. So we'll have some probably either 3 or 6 dB pads after that to drive um, or to provide the amp with a good load. And diplexes. So that'll be done at that point in time. Uh, and then we can then reconfigure the code and we'll have enough components then to go straight into a, um, a single sideband receiver. Once the single sideband receiver is up and running, we'll start working on the transmit side of the house. So first up, we'll do uh, the microphone amplifier we'll do, uh, followed by the low pass filter down here. Once we have those components in place, we can do a bit of a, um, a low power single sideband transmit. So we can use the microphone, use this topology as it's set up, and when it comes around here, we'll just skip the PA, we'll go straight to the low pass filter, and we'll output um, low power single sideband. And once we've got that up and running, uh, then work on the power amplifier, and then um, bring that up to our desired output power. So that's the current thinking. Um, that should keep me out of uh, out of mischief for for a few weeks. So that'll be the process. So um, I'll knock it on the head here. It's gone on long enough, and I'll start putting some thought into. Um, that code and getting everything up and running. What I will be doing is I will build all of that on um, a piece of um, board with some with a cop board, uh, prove out the design on that, and then once the overall design has been proven, will then become the uh, the fun and games part of actually shoehorning that into the available space. Um, I don't want to do that up front because um, I'm not. 100% sure exactly how the circuit's going to go uh, and the sizes of the individual modules and uh, I'd much prefer to do that separately and then 
like I say, with those, the way I do my boards, I can then pick them up individually and work out how they're going to fit, uh, and, you know, what, where the vertical boards need to be to make it, to make it all go. Anyway, um, I've probably made that sound horribly complex, but that's the way my brain works, and that's how I think, um, and that's going to be the process. Anyway, I'll say 73 here, and I'll get back to noodling. Cheers all.